replace those, um, it it's, takes these into consideration. Uh, some of these are actually adopted, or excuse me, uh, included by reference in the comprehensive plan, and we'll get that get to that later in the presentation. Community char characteristics on page 12, beginning on page 12. Um, this is really where the data gathering becomes important. Uh, when the consultant set out to uh, speak with stakeholders and do outreach, that brought up issues that informed them about what types of data needed to be looked at closely. But generally, the way this is done is they look at a lot of different information. Some is more important than others, but certain things are important in the, uh, in the data. Just uh, if you look at page 12, um, impact of the intermodal is certainly an issue and a major influence. Uh, Johnson County Fairgrounds figures prominently in this plan. Uh, incomplete residential subdivisions is an issue. I wouldn't say it's unique to Gardner, but it's certainly uh, an important issue in Gardner. Uh, annexation is an issue. We have a boundary agreement with Olathe and DeSoto, but not with Edgerton. Market and demographics. If you look to page 19, when I arrived in Gardner in February of 2013, last year, um, the thing I heard a lot was the, pro the population was projected to grow substantially. Gardner doubled in population two decades in a row uh, from 4,500 people in 1990 to 19,000 people in 2010, 2010 census. The, uh, it was projected to double again in 2020. Um, no one had really done a lot of analysis of that. Certainly uh, the Mid-America Regional Council had done uh, forecasts but uh, that was something that I heard, and at the time I heard it, it just didn't sound believable to me just because of the housing situation. I'm sure I wasn't alone. Um, if you look at the population growth, population is important in doing a plan, and this might be an obvious statement, but if you're looking at the area you're going to grow into, uh, the population has a, a large bearing on how large your planning area should be, how much residential growth you need to accommodate, et cetera, et cetera. So the population growth and population projections are important. So if you look at that graph at the top, the current, po or excuse me, the population at the 2010 census is 19,123. If you look at 2013, this is an estimate, and an estimate's not the same as a census. It's 20,000, just a little over 20,000, and 2018 is projected to increase to 21,489. Beyond that, this consultant didn't do uh, any more population projections themselves. They're, they did show what the Mid-America Regional Council has done at the bottom. And the Mid for those who don't know, the Mid-America Regional Council is a metropolitan planning organization for the Kansas City metro area, and they do population projections partly to, as a basis for um, transportation planning and uh, obtaining federal monies for uh, transportation projects. So their population forecast is in this table in the bottom. Uh, and starting with the 2010 as a base year, 2020, 22,674. 2030, just over 25,000, 2040, 28,000. Uh, some would say that's a fairly conservative uh, population forecast. They also have done a forecast for Johnson County. You can kind of see the growth there as well. Again, the, the plan will be reviewed annually. It, that doesn't, necessar doesn't mean it's necessarily updated annually, but it, could be, it will be reviewed annually as conditions change and it looks like population is growing faster than is projected, then it would signal a need maybe for an update 
or at least an examination of the, the, uh, the effect that that population growth would have on the plan. If you go to page 23, employment. Note, note the employment ratio and the inflow outflow jobs count on this page. So the employment ratio is in a graph at the upper right hand corner of the document. And um, this is a, when, when people say Gardner is a bedroom community, this is kind of indicative of that. Uh, Gardner is at the bottom in terms of jobs per, per person. Uh, primary jobs per 100 residents. So Gardner is at 17, Lenexa uh, by comparison is at 89. Keep in mind that this is within the city limits of Gardner. So people might identify the New Century Air Center as being Gardner, um, and in some cases it is. It's not counted in here. So if you included that, that number would go up substantially. Um, but it really isn't Gardner. Um, Inflow outflow jobs count, that, that uh, diagram with the two spears, overlapping spears on the, on the, uh, um, on the page. This is just showing that uh, a lot of people that live in Gardner don't work in Gardner. Page 27, retail gap analysis. So in the beginning of the process, you go out and talk to people and, and you ask people what they'd like to see happen in Gardner. And a lot of them, uh, there are a lot of things they talk about, but one of the things they talk about are retail stores. We'd like to have more restaurants. We'd like to have more, we'd like a Target. We'd like a, um, a Kohl's. Um, this is a very kind of a, at this point, kind of a broad brush look at where there might be an opportunity for retail to come into the market. If you look at, it explains how this is to be used. So there's a paragraph, there's a chart on the, on the right hand page, on page 27, and then it explains it. If you look at the second paragraph under retail gap analysis, gap analysis compares aggregate consumer spending, demand, to aggregate retail sales, supply, within a given retail category and drive time. When demand is greater than supply, leakage exists, suggesting that residents are spending dollars outside the measured area. Accordingly, accordingly excuse me, retail categories with leakage are potential opportunities for growth as local demand for these goods and services already exists but is unmet by existing supply. Leakage is noted on the company charts as a positive number. So what you kind of see from looking at the chart is there's not a lot of leakage in a lot of the different categories. There's a, back on page 26 again, there's a summary of where there are growth opportunities. It starts with grocery stores. So some of the growth opportunities is indi indicated by this gap analysis are grocery stores, gasoline stations, bars, furniture stores. This is just a broad brush, kind of a simple first look snapshot of, of uh, the marketplace, um, but it's kind of an indicative of where the opportunities might exist. So the vision statement, this is also a good way to summarize the plan, what the plan is trying to accomplish. This is on page 40. One thing that we got a lot when we uh, took this to the CPAC and other people is that they didn't realize that they didn't read this in the way it was intended to be read. It's written as a retrospective 20 years in the future. So this is if someone 20 years from now is writing about what Gardner is like at that time as Gardner will appear after adoption and implementation of the plan. If you need me to slow down so you have time to look at some of these pages, just let me know. Goals and objectives. I won't go into this in detail, but this is also an encompassing part of the plan that is elaborated in the uh, subsequent chapters. Uh, policy recommendations are provided in more detail in the subsequent chapters that address these areas. 
the categories are neighborhoods and housing